I'm Marty Stauffer. We sometimes think of ducks as clumsy barnyard birds that waddle around quacking like cartoon characters. A duck on land is awkward, but in the water, it's totally at home, swimming as smoothly as a sailboat or diving like a submarine. And in the air, a wild duck winging across a sunset sky is one of nature's prettiest sights. Two of the world's most beautiful ducks happen to be American native. The exquisitely colored wood duck, or woody, which feeds primarily on plant life near the surface, and the elegant hooded merganser, or hoodie, which feeds mainly by diving for fish. These two ducks are quite different in their feeding habits, but both prefer to nest in hollow trees or man-made nest boxes, which brings them into competition. Females sometimes even lay eggs in each other's nest. This behavior can lead to amusing mix-ups for woodies and hoodies. In western New York State, Iroquois National Wildlife Refuge <laughs> provides a 10,000-acre haven for many kinds of waterfowl. Among the ducks that come here to nest, is the small, boldly marked hooded merganser, nicknamed Hoodie for its striking crest. Both male and female have crests, but that of the female is smaller and less dramatic. The Hoodie's ornamental headdress can be opened or shut at will, like a fan, but during spring courtship, He's careful to carry it in a way that will appear most attractive and least threatening to the female of his choice. A duck's legs are set far back on its body, which makes it awkward on land, but gives it great control in the water. webbed feet enable it to paddle smoothly on the surface and in the case of the hoodie to dive swiftly to depths of 40 feet or more. often cooperate in searching out insects, snails, mollusks, crayfish, frogs, and fish, which they chase with an agility nearly equal that of an otter. Strong and streamlined underwater, the hoodie is also one of our fastest flying ducks, capable of rising straight up from the water without a running start. Though hoodies will sometimes feed on roots and seeds of aquatic plants, their diet is primarily animal matter obtained by diving.
Like other mergansers, the hoodie has a saw-edged bill that helps it get a grip on slippery fish. The bill is also used to waterproof its feathers with oil from a gland at the base of its tail. The wood duck, at least the male wood duck, is a bird of a different color. Though the female is drab, the male, with its iridescent plumage, is considered to be the most beautiful of all American ducks. Woodies are dabblers, not diving ducks. They feed at or just under the surface, on seeds, roots, and floating pond weeds. Though they do eat snails and insects, and sometimes small fish, their diet is about 90% vegetarian. The male woodie's crest does not stand up like the hoodie's, but serves equally well to attract the female whom he guards fiercely from all rivals. Woodies usually mate for life. Like hoodies, they spend the winter on warm southern ponds where they bond into pairs. As spring moves north, so do the ducks. Year after year, a pair will return to the same area to complete the rituals of courtship and mating and to nest. Hoodies are not as aggressive as woodies in chasing off rivals, but their head-bobbing ceremonies are equally effective in establishing who belongs with whom. Crests expanded, they circle and bow. In this display process, the drake who performs the most elaborate gestures seems to win the hen. Crest lowered, the male approaches the female. The display of his crest seems more for intimidating other males than for impressing the female. For her, he performs a dance of subtle restraint. and head-twisting ritual continues until the hen is finally ready to receive the drake.
his contribution to the future completed, the drake fans out his crest as he paddles away. New life is on the way. For untold centuries, woodies and hoodies found separate nesting places in abandoned tree cavities which had been hollowed out by pileated woodpeckers. But logging claimed much of that habitat, and woodies became a threatened species until the introduction of man-made nest boxes. Today, competition for nest boxes is extremely keen. A female hoodie will often lay her eggs in the same box already claimed by a woody hen, or vice versa, depending on who got there first. The nest boxes are protected by collars against predators like raccoons, but there's no guard against rivalry among the females. The raccoon minds its business, while the woody hen tends to the business of incubating her eggs. But are they all hers? A female woody lays from nine to 14 eggs in her down-lined nest. She cannot count so if there are other eggs in the nest, she incubates them all, though not all of them will hatch. After about a month of incubation, faint cheepings can be heard as the ducklings chip away inside the walls of their tiny oval prisons. Hatching is a long and difficult task accomplished by a sharp egg tooth at the tip of the duckling's bill. The mother helps only by calling her encouragement from outside. The ducklings emerge from the eggs, wet, wobbly, and weak. They hardly look capable of surviving. But within hours, they are dry and bright-eyed. Immediately, they begin investigating the nest and each other. Although the mother duck, or ducks, laid eggs in this nest over a period of a week or more, the incubation process is controlled so that all the ducklings hatch together.
by the next day, encouraged by calls from their parent, the young ducklings are ready, if not quite eager, to leave the nest. It's a brave duckling who takes the first leap. And just as great a leap for those who follow. So far, all the little hatchlings look identical, and all are woodies. Their first instinct is to head for the shelter of nearby reeds. And their second is to begin feeding on the plentiful supply of duckweed and other pond growth. Meanwhile, back at the nest entrance, who's this? This rather odd duckling is a young hoodie. not long before the youngsters seem totally at home in their new world, preening their downy feathers and feeding on the most succulent shoots. Soon, they're ready to follow the mother Woody out into the wide, watery world beyond. Nearby, a brood of young hoodies is also ready to leave the nest. These may be the brothers and sisters to the young hoodie ducklings who hatched in the woody female's nest. Wood ducks are often found in secluded waterways like this one, sheltered by overhanging trees. Like hoodies, they are strong flyers and sometimes roost in the higher branches. But they are most at home in the sun-warmed shallows among the reeds. Here they can readily escape from most predators, bathe and splash in safety, and feed easily on the thick layer of pond weeds. Already the young hoodie is dabbling further into the water than his siblings, as if looking for something beneath the surface. When young, hoodies will sometimes feed on aquatic plants, but animal life is their main food.
in water this shallow, the mother woody has no trouble catching a juicy minnow. And before long, some of her youngsters follow her example with apparent ease. The hoodie duckling's efforts at fishing seem confused by comparison. His feeding instinct urges him to dive, but the water's too shallow. While his brothers and sisters seem contented and well-fed, the hoodie duckling appears to be somewhat frustrated. He's more interested in playing tug of war with the reed than he is in nibbling at its seed head. The woody hen keeps close watch over her entire brood. To her, they're all alike. The quiet waters around a beaver lodge are deep enough for the hoodie to splash in and sheltered enough to satisfy the instincts of the woody mother. Disturbed by the commotion, the beaver quits work early and retreats to the peace and quiet inside his lodge. As the ducklings paddle and splash, they present a tempting target for any would-be predator. Snapping turtles, for instance, take a great number of young ducks each year. All the ducklings show signs of growth, especially the little hoodie, whose baby down is fast being replaced by waterproof adult feathers. The garter snake poses little threat to the young ducklings. But just to be safe, the brood moves on. As the mother lags behind to round up stragglers, the young hoodie instinctively leads the group where he feels safest, out into open water where he can dive to escape danger. This woody duckling takes its time following its mother, showing little concern about the advancing garter snake. Such an attitude comes from lack of experience and could prove foolhardy with a bigger, hungrier snake. The woody hen tries to lead her brood back toward what she considers safety along shore. But once again, the hoodie veers toward deep water. The little hoodie is torn between two instincts. Dive, says his blood. Come with us, cry his nestmates, as their mother herds them into the shelter of the reeds. The survival instinct is sometimes as complex as it is strong. A woody or hoodie mother will accept and protect all the hatchlings in her brood, however mixed. 
In the same way, an odd duckling's survival depends on how well it can adapt to this double way of life. Before civilization cleared much of their habitat, competition between woodies and hoodies might have been minimal. Were there ever enough natural nesting sites so that each female could find a place to brood her eggs? No one knows. Nor does anyone know what long-term effect these mix-ups might have. What interests me is how competition for nests can turn into unintentional cooperation in raising each other's young. To a little duckling, this may be bewildering, but the result is a happy ending. By preserving habitat and providing nest boxes, we humans can continue to better the chances of survival for woodies and hoodies. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.